Okay, welcome, welcome. The Broke But Not Broken show with Stephen X. And I've got a very big, very big guest today. One of my all-time punk rock heroes, Keith Morris. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing excellent, buddy. I'm doing excellent down here in New Zealand. Very cold, but that's all right. It's cold where you're at? It's pretty cold at the moment here, yes. Yep. Well, we're at 94 degrees here. So you're, you're damn hot up there? Got a little bit of a breeze blowing through on my window, which kind of acts as uh, um, air conditioning. Air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how, how far away is, uh, I, I believe, Los Feliz, right, you said? Where... Or Los Angeles to Humosa Beach. Well, um, I'm about six houses away from Sunset Boulevard, the Sunset Strip. I'm nice. in East. I'm near East Hollywood, and the way that it works is Hermosa Beach, where uh, I spent about 24 years of my life. Um, it's about 20 miles south of here. Okay, okay. So quite a quite a while. A couple well, hours. Um it depends upon the traffic. It, yeah. it could be half an hour, it could be an hour to get down there. I don't right. I don't go down there very often. Don't have much reason to go down, back down there down those no, ways. Because the place has changed. I mean the the complexion of the community. The people yep. that run the community, um, the people that live in the community, they're not the same people that. It's not the same vibe. Was happening no. when I was there. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I get that. I've just I've just moved from my place where I grew up all my years. It's about six hours from where I am here, so that's why I'm in a a weird looking room that isn't uh, decked out with anything nice it's uh i've just set up so um i'm very very happy to have you on the show my friend and um if i could jump into it so let's get into a time time machine and go back back to panic so did you have any bands pre-panic panic which was going to turn Black. into Black Flag was my exactly. first band. It was, it, was Greg your very... Ginn, it was Greg Ginn and myself. Yep. And in the very beginning, it was just Greg and myself. And we would, we would um, practice the songs with him playing through an amp and a speaker. And I would plug the mic into the amp and speaker so we were yep. both playing out of the same i've style. done that in my younger years too yeah. i've done that too yeah. yeah 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 cool and some you, you guys had a fluctuation of bassists or something right until you found chuck we um chuck was our fourth bassist um fourth. one of our yeah. first bass players was uh raymond pettibone who oh, was greg ginn's no, no younger shit. brother yeah, um, yeah. We also we also had Spot, who um, Spot yep. is a great photographer, and Spot also produced all of the early SST recordings. Yeah, Who's and um, do, some Misfits, Meat Puppets, Minutemen. Yeah, he, he great, worked great, on great. all of those early recordings, um, and then we had another guy. We just called him Kansas. We don't even remember his last, <laughs> his first or last name. We just called him Kansas. He oh, happened classic. to be a friend of Brian Migdal. Brian was our drummer. He happened to okay. be one of Brian's friends, and he happened to be um, I want to say homeless. I mean, he was just <laughs> sleeping in people's garages, sleeping on people's floors. Uh, sleeping on their couches, sleeping in backyards. You have to remember, we're down in the South Bay, southern part of Southern California. 
Yep. Where the weather, for the most part, even during the winter, it's like you could still Sunny. sleep outdoors. Yeah. So that's Perfect what surf community. Did. Okay. He and, his, he and his brother had migrated out from Kansas. Right. And that's why right. we called him Kansas. Well, it's and a fitting name. <laughs> he, he and his brother were just a couple of knuckleheads. I mean, oh, he, right. he was a, he was a decent bass player, yep. but he and his brother were just a couple of knuckleheads. They uprooted a, uh, like 20 foot tall marijuana tree. <laughs> we're well. right. Sorry. You just cut out for a second. Sorry, mate. Um, okay. Did I tell you the part about the 20? Yeah, his, his uprooting the, the, the. They uprooted it, threw it over the fence, and dragged it down the sidewalk. <laughs> and and left, wow. a, left a trail of mud and dirt. And bud. It led right up to Greg Ginn's front door. Like it oh, actually no. led into Greg Ginn's backyard, but it was like, there's the house. I'm knocking on the front door. I want my tree back. Give me my Shit. marijuana back. Wow. And that, that is was, a knucklehead thing to do. That was when Greg said, no more. You're out of here. And yeah. that was when Greg also had made up his mind about, uh, giving Brian Migdal his pink slip. You're okay. fired. You and know, you, um you brought these guys in. I had them sleeping in my garage. They were sleeping in my backyard. And then that, that now they're ripping off marijuana plants in people's backyards. <laughs> you can't have that, no. Who who came in the drums after? Was it wasn't Chuck, was it, that came straight after? No, Chuck Chuck um Chuck had, um, I want to say Chuck had just come in at Brian Migdal's tail end. And okay. then, then we got Robo. Yep. We, yep. we found Robo. Robo had run an ad in the like Penny Saver, which is a throwaway magazine where you find out where there's yard sales and garage sales and, yep. you know, who's selling what. and Like the recycler um, or some. There, things they're, like that well they're they're called want ads yeah, it, yeah it would be like i'm a drummer i'm looking for a band these are my influences yeah man and, uh yeah i know what you're talking about we had them my old town years ago it's very gone yeah. now but yep so you got robo through one of them and yes classic colombian man that came through very Fucking so what was he? He was before or after Chuck, sorry. After he came in right after Chuck yep. came into the and band. Chuck did no recording with you guys? No, we we the the first black flag EP is Chuck playing bass. Oh right. No, oh, oh sorry, I was meaning um the the drummer uh Chuck Biscuits. No, Chuck Biscuits was way, way, way after I was gone. We, okay. we, we recorded the first EP with Never Brian Migdal and Chuck Dukowski. Chuck yep. was the bass player. Yep. Brian yep. was the drummer. We had just finished recording this record and things got stupid. And that's when All right. Greg told get out of here Brian <laughs> hit the road yeah and um how long after that was was circle jerks in the formation um i had been in black flag for three years yep. and we we barely just did anything the first two years just going through all of these different players and it was it was all we could do to rehearse 
Okay. Okay. And Chuck came in and said, we're going to start rehearsing every night. We're going to become a real band. If you want me to play in this band, this is what has to happen. And that's when we, that's when we started our regiment of fucking. Yes, sir. On. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Record, yeah. re- rehearse, 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 rehearse. Oh, we're going to play a show. Oh, we're going to play in somebody's backyard. Rehearse, 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 rehearse. Oh, we're going to play a show in somebody's basement. Rehearse, 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 rehearse. Oh, Thanks hey, we're, we're playing in somebody's living room. Uh, rehearse, 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 and rehearse. Yeah. And eventually we finally um, got the nerve to ask somebody that booked bands <laughs> in some clubs if we yep. could play at their club. Cool. And do you remember what, what clubs that you played at with Black Flag? Uh, club 88. Right. Um, King's Palace, which would later turn into a place called Raji's, which actually became very famous because everybody played there. Uh, L7, Nirvana, Afghan Wigs, X, um, Lockup, which was my friend Brian Grillo. That was his band. That was one of his first bands that had um, Tommy Murillo, who would go on to be in Rage Against the Machine. Oh, wow. Wow. They would play yeah. there. But I knew Brian because he hung out at the church where Black Flag rehearsed. I see. Yep. Yep. Black I know what you're talking about. Red Cross. Yep. Yep. And that's, I guess, where you met uh, the guys who would be in your future off. Right, Red Cross. Um, uh, who was was it? Dimitri and McDonald. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but with uh, Circle Jerks, that that first album cover, where was that shot? That was a a light. Was it a outdoor show? Or um, it was in a, it was in a bowl. Or yep. what would have formerly have been a swimming pool. Oh, a skate. It was a skate bowl, a was skate it? skate park or... down in Marina Del Rey. Uh, yep, yep, yep. The, the one, was it? Because uh, there was a, they all got shut down in the early 80s, right? Those Marina Del Rey, all of those skate parks. I don't know about that. Right, right. Um, yeah. So were you skateboarding when you were before Black Flag, when you were younger? Um, I skated for about three or four years. And I eventually um, grew tired of it because I was having, uh, I was tired of picking myself up off of the ground. I hear that. I, I hear was that. Tired of my my knees being scraped and bruised, and the palms of my hands being scraped. Yeah. The cut. water is a lot more forgiving than concrete, isn't it? Well, I love body surfing. Body surfing right. at that time was my favorite thing. All my right. friends were were skaters and surfers and yep. skiers, and um, I I surfed for about two weeks, and that was enough. Okay. I, I realized enough with all this extra garbage to be c- carrying around. I, I can yeah. throw on my swim trunks and jump in the ocean and just catch waves, there. catch yeah. waves. Did you ever try and um, they call it boogie boarding or body boarding? Um, we had surf mats. We had a thing called the surf mat, which was uh, it had to be uh, pumped up with a an air oh, pump I know. That, that you would use on your bicycle tires or if you had a f- flat tire on your car yep. and it needed air, you would just. Yeah. Yeah. For half so you'd an run hour. out with them. Yeah. I know you're talking about those yeah. inflatables. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Cause where, where I grew up. Um, so s- snowboarding and skiing, we've got a mountain that you can go snowboarding and then go to the beach and surf in the same day or skate 
and then go see a punk rock show, you know? So that was, you know, that's what I grew up doing, skateboarding and all that too. But my knees are, like you said, they, they hurt, you know? Yeah. After yeah. all that, they hurt much yeah. more than punk rock ever did to me. <laughs> um, I was, I was listening to the new off album. I don't know how new it is now, but, I was watching, watching and listening because it's it's a movie too, right? Well, the the movie um, we're hoping that the movie comes out possibly around the first of the year. Okay, so it was like music videos in, I guess. Yeah, those are along. just music videos. Some of those videos are pieced together from footage from the from the movie. It looks very cool. Looks so very, the, very interesting. Those videos serve as um, trailers for the movie. Wicked! It looks very cool. Like uh, I get, I get um, funhouse sort of vibes in some of the songs with saxophones and stuff like that, but straight out punk rock. So, like, where are we coming at with this album? you know, compared to the last ones. Well, the thing that happened with uh, Dimitri and I, Dimitri is our guitar player. We had started to write songs. And of course, while we're writing, we're uh, conversing. And Dimitri was, was wondering where I wanted to go with this record. Okay. I I already knew where Dimitri wanted to go because he had explained to me he when he's at home, he doesn't yep. play electric guitar. He does not sit around and play electric guitar. He plays acoustic guitar. I'm the same. And yeah. So um he's listening to people like Nick Drake and um Roy Harper who was a big, big, big influence on Led Zeppelin. He listens to uh, Towns Van Zandt. Uh, yep. He listens to John Fahey. He's, he's got a bunch of like obscure acoustic folk guitar players that he listens to. Right, right. Dimitri, Dimitri doesn't come from punk rock. Dimitri, okay, what is... That's all, it's all new to him. I mean, he heard it when he was working in the record store, when he was working in the record store in Philadelphia, where he would hear Stiff Little Fingers. So he liked Stiff Little Fingers. He loves the damned. Um, yep. He loves the Sex Pistols. Oh, he great bands to love. Brains. He loves the Bad Brains. I can't really uh, rattle off many more bands. Yeah, because we don't really talk when, when he and I talk. We don't talk about punk rock. Exactly. He he, he comes from um, the songwriting school of people like Ray Davis from the Kinks. Yep, excellent songwriter. John Lennon and Paul McCartney from the Beatles. Pete Townsend from The Who. Yep. Um, he, he's got a few more, but he, he does not come from punk rock, and it's just like he knows when he's playing with me that the energy has to be kicked up. The vibe has to be a little bit more staccato. Yeah. He's, a big, yeah. he's a big fan of um, Nirvana. He okay. loves Nirvana. Um, there's a whole list that I could go down, but uh, that's not necessary. We sat, I said, Dimitri, we have made three records. And the vibe on all three records is pretty much the same. Maybe the production values have been a bit different and the mixing yep. has been a bit different, but we... Um, need to step outside of our box. We need to, um, my thing was, we need to be more colorful. Yep, yep. 
when I, I when I was listening to it, I thought, man, I need to be on some mushrooms or something right now because I'll be going. This would be, whoa, you know, the guitar effects when it's it's amazing. Carry on, sorry. We um in our discussions and the music that we're listening to. Normally, when we get ready to write a record or while we're writing a record, we have certain bands that we listen to that influence us. ZZ Top, Blue Oyster mm-hmm. Cult, The Damned, The Bad yep. Brains, The Ramones, <clears throat> Black Flag, Circle Jerks. Right. You know, now, a lot of that stuff would be, well, you're a, you're, you play punk rock, so you must listen to these bands. And it's yeah, like, it's not, it's not like that, right? I don't, I don't sit around listening to Black Flag Records or Circle Jerks Records. I've you just can't do that all the enough. time, right? Anyways, you can't do that I all said, the time. I said, why don't we go to a place where we're not supposed to go? You know, there's yep. certain rules as to, well, you're in a punk rock band, so you have to do this. You're in a punk rock, you're in a punk rock band, so you have to look like this. You're in yeah. a punk rock band, so you have to behave like this. And it's like, fuck, like, all, fuck that all that noise. Yeah. yeah. Toss that right out yeah, the man. window. I said, Dimitri, we, we'd also been talking about all of the different subject material. Dimitri said, look, Keith, you um, had a podcast where you did 50 episodes. And all you're dealing with are conspiracy theories. Yeah. And in these conspiracy theories, they can go two different ways. You can either believe them or you can dis- disavow them. Like, that's yeah. not true. Yeah. But um, one of the things that we found going through these conspiracy theories, these episodes, was that certain things in the episode stood out. Right. Like something I would say would end up becoming a line or a lyrical exactly. line or chopped exactly. into like two or three pieces into lyrics. Yep. For free LSD. Finding that gem. Finding those gems, eh? Just, and and, oh, that's a line. Boom. Yep. Uh, He said, Keith, what what kind of lyrics do you want to write for this record? He said, normally you're politicizing and you're socializing. Let's let's try something different. He told me, go back and listen to those episodes and you'll have certain things that are said between either myself or or my partner, Pete Weiss, where... Uh, Pete Weiss, I know that name. Pete Weiss played drums in a band called Thelonious Monster. Okay, right. Anyways, we did this podcast. I went back and listened to all of the podcasts. I wrote down certain things that jumped out of out at me. Yeah. And that's how we created the lyrics. We created the bulk of the lyrics that way. But then we also started watching documentaries. Cool. We watched cool. documentaries about the CIA. We watched documentaries about UFOs. We watched documentaries about um, the Southern California music scene that happened in Laurel Canyon. In the, in the late 60s and happened, that, right? That just happened overnight. That was not something that was premeditated. That was something, there were clubs springing up down on Hollywood yeah. Boulevard and Sunset Boulevard that were never there. And all of a sudden, two or three days later, there's people hanging out at these clubs. And is it is it weird that every one of these people have ties to the military and stuff like that? You know, like their well, parents? Well, Stephen Stills in Buffalo Springfield, his dad was... Uh, military intelligence so he was dragged around through south america you know i've got to go down to uh rio de janeiro because the government wants me to rub elbows with some dictator or whatever yeah um yeah um and jim morrison's dad i believe jim morrison's jim morrison's dad 
was responsible for the Vietnam War. Yes, he did the uh, did that fake uh, thing that led up to it, right? Well, he, what, what, what they pretended he, it was real. He was. Um, I want to say he was Navy, and they right. pulled. Okay. They pulled into the. They they pulled into the one of the big harbors, and we're hoping that they would be fired upon. Like, well, there's the Vietnamese. They don't want us here. Why are you here? Then they start shooting at us, which gives us a gives us a reason to shoot back at them. Let's exactly. start this. Let's get this shit happening. Yeah. So yeah. they didn't shoot at us. So they our guys started shooting at them. And it turned yeah. into the Vietnam War. And them all congregating in Laurel Canyon. And there's like one house apparently that's still there that they all went to a lot of the time. It, you know about that house? Um, well, Harry Houdini, the uh, magician, he had yep. a house. I, and I think I want to say there was another house close to his where Frank Zappa lived. Frank Zappa's, Frank That's Zappa's dad was also military. Yeah. Um, now this, it's just I mean, nuts, love all right? of these bands. I love all of these bands that came out of Laurel Canyon. I mean, I don't care yeah. for the mamas and the papas, but I love well, Buffalo especially John. <laughs> I love Joni Mitchell. I love yeah. um, Arthur Lee and Love, The Doors. Um, yeah. But uh, anyways, this scene broke out on Sunset Boulevard down in Hollywood, and. The CIA, uh, what happened was um, a guy named Owsley, who had uh, been a provider for the Grateful Dead and the all LSD. of those bands up in San Francisco, got busted cooking up a batch of methamphetamine in a bathtub oh. in Berkeley. Okay. He was arrested. He was in jail and it, it took it took them four hours to spring him and have him heading down to Southern California, heading down to Laurel Canyon. Wow. And once he got here, started making more doses of LSD. Yeah. And ultimately it's the CIA that ultimately the CIA ended up giving out over 400 million hits of free LSD. Now that's where we get free LSD. It's mind control. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. You know, we, we and a certain portion of our population under control. Yeah. We'll just keep keep providing them this LSD. And it's um the the government really of uh, in USA government really does think of it as mind control because if you get busted selling I think it's over a hundred hits or so, maybe a thousand. You get done for th overthrowing the government, and that's why people that were selling LSD at like Grateful when Grateful Dead got back together in the nineties or whatever, people are still in prison now for selling massive sheets of acid because it's mind control by at that level. You know what I mean? Like the government class it is that. Well, that was just one of the conspiracies. Yeah, yeah. We 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 um we dealt with um we have a song called War Above Los Angeles. Yeah, I listened to that. It's a true story where one day in our beautiful Southern California weather, sun's out, all of a sudden there's this bright, shiny object just moving along at a snail's pace. Like, yep. well, what is this? They're looking at it. It's like, what is this? We better shoot it down. We, we need to find out what this is. And uh, in their ignorance, they fired upon it. The military fired upon it. Guns and cannons. And yeah. Machine and it didn't do shit. And, probably. Did absolutely nothing. The, um, Bright, shiny object passed over Los Angeles, headed out to the Pacific Ocean, Santa Monica Bay. 
turned around, made a U-turn, and came back over for one more pass over, one more flyover. Wow. It, the, the, the mentality of whoever was um, controlling the object was maybe, hey, cross your arms. What are you going to do to us? Yeah. Let's see us what you and just come humans, on. Humans, what are you going to do to us? Yeah. yeah. You've given us all your guns and look at us. We're still here just watching you. <laughs> hey. And it's, we'll be back. That's nuts. That's nuts. We'll be back at a later time. Yeah. And we'll probably so pick anyways, you up. anyways, getting back to Dimitri and I's conversation as to what what we want to do with this record, we want it to be more colorful. Yep. We started to find that the, maj the majority of the music that we were listening to that was part of this genre of music that we are a part of, it's pretty basic. It's pretty black and white. We, mm -hmm. we, we, um, my, my thing was, Dimitri asked me what was one of my favorite albums. And I said, well, Dimitri, the first album that I ever owned was the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah. You know, and yep. if you're punk rock, you don't go around bragging about something like that. You know, you got to say, well, the first punk, the, the first <laughs> record that I ever owned was. Yeah. The, Anything the punk. Band album. Yeah. Well, if it was Machine Gun Etiquette, you're doing pretty well if someone did that. But mine wasn't a punk album. I, you know, hey, <laughs> that's what it is. Well, we're but, older guys. You know, we listen to stuff. We listen to other music before there was punk rock. Yeah, I, I'm of I'm of a younger descent, but um, yeah, there's so much before punk rock. By the time I was around, that there was I just delved into first '60s stuff, I guess. You know, like um, and then garage, and then punk rock. It kind of happened for me that way, but. Going back to Chuck Dukowski, did you see his band? Was it were something were worm? Like, worm. I was going to say that, but I, I the spelling was I don't know. <laughs> did you they see were, them play? They were. They based their thing on a band called Blue Cheer. Okay. And and Worm were loud and big and heavy and greg ginn and i love them yep yep i've i've heard them Good for seen chuck. them described as sludgy slow like heavy slow sludgy kind of sound yeah yep cool like a blue cheer um iron butterfly yeah, wicked. They yeah, had that kind of vibe. And um, you're, you're talking about uh, Dimitri being like a singer-songwriter. You worked with Xander Schloss as well. And I've been listening to his stuff for a few years that he does acoustically. So is he sort of in the same sort of vein, singer-songwriting before? Um, well, he comes from a funk background, doesn't he? funk i i think he said that in something that he was in a funk band before punk <laughs> well he was he was in a band called the endless banana right right that played in compton or something wait no not the endless banana the juicy bananas <laughs> nice name <laughs> but yeah. um both xander and dimitri their because of their musical expanse they're pretty much jack of all trades when yeah it, when it comes to playing i love that style of guitaring that both of them do i've, I've seen a lot of uh <laughs> the acoustic acoustic side of xander more than I, i've ever seen dimitri do it i don't know if he's does he do Acoustic stuff ever? Like live? Just at home. No. Just, just at home. When he's sitting at home. 
Yep. The Circle Jerks logo, was that Sean Wheeler, that the guy that's slamming? The, the... Um, no. Sean Wheeler, you you have Sean Carey. Okay. Up with Sean Wheeler. Sean Wheeler was in a band called Throw Rag. Yep. Sean Wheeler played with Xander. Mm-hmm. He had a thing called Shawnee Xander. And um, Sean Wheeler plays with one of my favorite musical characters, a guy named Mario Lawley, who okay. um, was part of Desert Sessions. The, the, the songs from Desert Sessions would yep. sometimes turn into Queens of the Stone Age songs. Yeah, so, I've seen some of that stuff yeah, and heard some of that stuff. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So Mario's in a band called Fatso Jetson. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I see you've got Rocket from the Crypt behind you. Uh, was there someone from that band that became in a band with you? Mario Rubacaba. Now we're talking oh. about two Marios. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. My, my mind's going over overdrive. <laughs> the thing with Mario Rubacaba, he was in our ops original lineup. Right. Right. Mario started a band with a couple of his friends called earthless. Mm-hmm. And he started to get busy with earthless to the point where, they were his priority. It's my right. band. I got to go play with my band. Yeah. Totally understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, the off record took us eight years. Hold on one second. Oh, good. Got to gotta let this call go through. You can take it if you want. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Sean, I gotta call you back. Halibut. Right on. Bye. <laughs> hey, you can have halibut back. for lunch. And just like that. Boom. It'll be a late lunch, but I'm gonna have halibut. Nice, nice. And um, I, I was looking I, at... I, I need to eat more seafood because I eat too much red meat. Okay. And I eat too okay. much bread and butter and ice cream. And I just had a blood panel and my doctor was like, no, 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 no. You, you want to get put on a insulin pump? It's like, no, I don't want to get no. put on... I don't want the extra responsibility. No, no, because you're already diabetic, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been a diabetic for about 25 years. And just handling it, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a a struggle, but it's better than being on the machine, right? Oh, the kidney dialysis, yes. Yeah. So um, that's what I was thinking. I was uh, was listening to something London May put out. And it, I think it was a rehearsal or some, uh, maybe he was trying out to be in one of your bands, maybe um, Circle Jerks. Yeah, we, we um, set up an audition. <clears throat> we had, I think we had uh, kicked Keith Clark out of the band, Adolph T. Bohr. We I think we kicked him out of the band and we needed to find a drummer. Right. And so we ended up we ended up uh, auditioning Josh Freeze, who is now playing in the Foo Fighters, which oh, wow. that's, that's the that's the gig that he'd been waiting for all of his life. Yeah, that's going to put all five of his kids through college. Oh, yes, buy them I all cars and buy them yeah. all homes. It's just like hey, one of those things comes right. and falls in your lap. We auditioned Josh Freeze. We auditioned London. 
London had played in Sam Sam Hain. Yep. With Glenn Danzig. We auditioned um, Jerry Angel, who had played with the Blasters. He'd also played with the Dickies. Oh, cool. And and we also auditioned... um, God, I forget his name. Um, He also played in Queens of the Stone Age. He was in the Um, first... Joey? No, not Joey. Joey plays in Circle Jerk. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm getting con- yeah, Joey. So the I don't know who the other drummer was, not apart yeah. from obviously Dave stepped in, but um, no, nah. yeah. How was it playing with Joey Costello? Um, the Circle Jerks wouldn't be playing if Joey was not playing with us. Yeah, he's, he's a- just that he's that important to what we do. He knows yeah. our songs better than we do. So it's, wow. you get in a room and it's like, so do you want me to play it like Kevin Fitzgerald? Do you want me to play it like Chuck Biscuits? you want me to play it like Lucky Larry? you want me to play it like Keith Clark? <laughs> it's like, dude, do your thing. You be, yeah. you bring what you want to bring to it. When when Chuck uh, Biscuits left Danzig and he stepped in, I thought it was a very wise, you know, I'd never heard of him, but he was excellent you know, for, for what Danzig was doing. So it's really cool to hear he, he works for you guys, you know? Yeah. And um, who has been your favorite drummer of the Circle Jerks anyway? Um, I loved playing with Chuck Biscuits. Yep. I love playing with the Joey C., and that's a very difficult question for me to answer. It, I know. I, I got, I, as soon as it came out, though, oh, that's a hard one because you can't please everyone with that well, answer, it's, you know? It's, it's really easy to play with Joey. Yep. Because he's so dedicated. Like, he wants to be the first guy in the venue so he can set up his drums and make yeah. sure everything's tuned and all of the symbols are clean and he's got it all sounds the like sticks a, ready to go. And also it sounds like a drummer that isn't a drama. You know, a lot of drummers are dramas. There's no, he sounds there's no drama with Joey. Yeah. Excellent. We, we had a little bit of drama with Joey because he was, um, his wife was expecting and we okay. were playing. Yeah. And he was supposed to leave after we got through playing. He was supposed to leave later that night to fly home to be with his wife, to be there when she developed when she um, delivered their daughter. And yeah. he was he was feeling it. He was like really on edge. It was like you I couldn't did. joke with him. You had to be serious with them. I made a couple of comments on stage, a couple of sarcastic comments, and he was really pissed off. It was like yeah. he didn't need to hear that at that time. And I was no, just I was not right. sympathetic to his feelings. So um But hey, we, we all live and learn and he's got a baby, what was it, baby daughter or a son that yes. came baby daughter? Baby daughter. So that's beautiful. It's beautiful to happen. You know, yep, and, um, great thing because is, he had three is. boys, so now he's got four kids, and he's got one daughter, and she's going to grow up to keep the three boys in their place. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, was lucky was lucky the drummer that was from Agent Orange as well. Lucky before he played with us, played in big jazz bands. He p- played it as his college jazz band. He probably yep. was in the high school marching band. Um, Lucky wasn't punk. Lucky but wasn't did he punk go- in- until he started playing with us. And yeah. he didn't, he did not play in Agent Orange. He played like a different- Crash. 
He played okay. in the Barbie Crash Band, and he played right. with Wasted Youth. And I mm-hmm. think he might have played a show or two with Bad Religion. Right, right. Um, see that. Uh, so, what's his name? Greg Hetson went on to Bad Religion, and uh, they kicked him out. Right, like. I've seen this on um, Fat Mike's podcast. They kicked him out because he was popping a couple pills and a Valium or something. And he looked like he had his shit together to me. I wasn't there, so I don't know. But it seems like well, a very, well, bad religion. I don't know. They, they, they're pretty straight, probably. They, um, not necessarily, but they made him an offer that he wasn't supposed to refuse, that he refused. Okay. Well, more to the story. Head on out there and do whatever you're going to do. We're not, we, we, they were going to wait for him to go through rehab. Okay. You know, they would have got a second guitar player and they would have played shows without him. Yeah. Your, your place in the band is, cemented you know you have a you have exactly he's that guitarist back to yeah and he didn't take him up on it Mm, okay because he didn't tell that side of the story in the thing but yeah whatever you know i was just uh seeing your take on it but he's um, sober he's sober now okay he's he's been sober for quite a few years yep that that's good to hear Good but they, they moved on without him. It's they like, did because you know, we we made you this offer, you refused it, and you yeah, know, good. They luck. came to New Zealand just about a a couple months back with um, social distortion and um, bad religion and social distortion. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you go? I, I my girlfriend went. I didn't go. I was in New Plymouth. I wish I could have gone, <laughs> but you know me first in the gimme gimmies. I've heard of them. They were playing the week after. So I went and seen them and CJ Ramone was playing bass. And I was expecting Fat Mike. So when I seen CJ, I was like, fucking yes. (laughs) You know, a Ramon. Because the Ramones really got me into punk rock. You know, in the first And they're not even a punk rock band. Exactly. They're they're a pop band. Pop band. There you go. Just like the Buzzcocks. Just like the Descendants. Just One like of my Dickies. favorite uh, Buzzcocks when they came to my hometown. Oh, it was perfect. Such a perfect, perfect pop punk band. Great band. You know? Yeah, very great. I love all that, you know, because it, it's distorted. Yeah, but it's not, it's, you know, the Ramones, especially, it's not it's punk not- rock, punk rock, you know, it's not hardcore, but it, it's just good music. Hey. Well, they yeah, were highly yeah. influenced by the Beach Boys. As yeah, you can hear it right, just all over their records, their early stuff, you know. Um, so what's what's on the plans for off after this? Have you guys got a tour booked for this new we're, record? We're actually um, we we have a tour of Australia booked now we um the 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 promoter that's doing our tour i guess reached out and asked if we wanted to play a couple of shows in new zealand which i would love to do i mean i've only been to new zealand i've been to new zealand once with the off open for the red hot chili peppers okay okay that was a stopover. We were on our way to Australia to do the big day out, which was uh, that particular big day out was the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the Killers. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Who were actually really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the Alabama Shakes, Depth yep. the Brotherhood. Um few other bands Man. some australian bands 
I, I tell you, you guys have got a few fans here in New Zealand, and it it would it would work. And but the only way to do New Zealand is to do Australia. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it would be. I'd love to see you guys come through here. That would be fucking excellent. Yeah. So um, I uh, anything you want to plug for the future? I I know you've got a book, right? My damage. Uh, my book's been out, I believe, six years. Six years. I'm a little bit late there, Stephen. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> um, and because the book did so well, the book company asked me to write a second second book. Work of course, I, I would work with my uh, co-conspirator, Jim Ruland, who, um, because of my book doing so well, the book company came back to Jim and said, so you want to write a bad religion book? He said, of course. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that book did better than my book. They said, you you want to write another book for us and they they kind of left it up to him but they hinted that they wanted a, a book about SST records okay okay so he, there's a lot he, of history there he he wrote a book about SST records cool cool it's called corporate rock sucks i've got it up over there by my record shelf yeah the yeah. history of the history of SST records where he interviews a lot of the people in a lot of the bands that were a lot of people that got label. fucked over. He did not interview Greg Ginn because Greg Ginn's not talking to anybody. No. Okay. Yeah. Cause so much people got screwed over through SST records really. Right. Royalties. I'm talking yes. about yes. all sorts. Yes. Yeah. So he, so he Greg interviewed Ginn, when when we started Black Flag was my best friend. Yeah. We we had become friends because I was working in a record store and his younger sister was going out with the guy that owned the record store. So she Erica would bring Greg along with her to the record store, knowing that Greg was starting to become interested in rock music. And music. Cool, cool. Yeah. And, and it's so a shame that this stuff tears. Carry on. She Sorry. she and um, Michael, who was the owner of the, the record store, they'd take off to go eat lunch, smoke cigarettes, drink beers, hang out on the Hermosa Pier, and I would be left in charge of the record store. And Greg would be there, and it's like, Greg, we are not going to listen to <clears throat> Greg the records Jordan. that M Michael normally plays, being yeah. the first three Bruce Springsteen albums. Okay. Um, Linda Ronstadt, Poco, New yeah, Riders. We can throw the them stage. out the bin. Throw yeah. them. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, dig around through the records behind the counter and see if there's anything that's noisy, anything yep. that's loud, anything that's obnoxious. And uh, luckily there, there would be um, a couple of records behind the counter that we would listen yep. to, but there, there would be um, used records out in the rack. And I just go through the used racks and I'd play Uriah Heep. I'd play Deep Purple and Black Sabbath, um, Blue Cheer. Yeah, yeah. Iron Excellent Butterfly. Stuff. Excellent stuff. Uh, yeah. Aerosmith, Ted Nugent. Don't tell me you turned Greg on to Grateful Dead. No, he was, no. He was a dead. Good. He was a deadhead when I met him. Yeah, uh, I've heard he's a big deadhead, right? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so, oh, fuck. I'm sorry. I just blanked completely. I had something on the top of my mind, and it just went, boom, fucking, ah, uh, shit. Ah, oh, I can't think of it again. Sorry, mate. Um, 
Well, anything else you want to you want to speak about? Well, I, I just like to let everybody know we did talk about the movie. Yep. And that's yep. very important. That's very, very important to what's going on here. Yeah. Um, hold on one second. Okay. I'll be right back. So when in seventies, oh, what are you holding up for there? Oh, that's the movie, is it? That's the poster. Uh -huh. Free LSD, wicked. I noticed um, pro skater, what's his name? Um, in one of the video, Nuge. Uh, do you know him? The, he's in the, the he's in the movie. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, cool. he he's in. Um, I want to say, I want to say four scenes in the movie. Work it, and yeah. he's, he's of course he's in one of the videos. So, so do you know him, and or some of your one of your band members did, or something? Can you hear me? Yep. I I can hear you. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Can you hear me? We, yep. we were talking about the nuge. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, yep. Okay, did we you, were talking about you, the Nuge. Nuge is in one of the last videos that we put out. He's skating down a hill. And he plays two different roles in the movie. It's like a, a lot of these actors and actresses that are in the movie play dual roles. Because we're, we're, we're going back and forth between realities. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> It, the movie is a science fiction movie. Yeah. It's yeah. a love story. It's a us versus them, like off like versus the evil government aliens. Okay. That There's sounds, a lot of different things going on, but it, it sounds be, very cool. It'll be out sometime next year. Okay. So we're looking at the, the start of next year. Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Well, Sooner um, than later. Yeah. I want everyone to keep your eyes peeled for the new off movie coming out next year. All right. Right. And, and for any of you that have not heard the album, you could go to Bandcamp. It's it's up on Bandcamp. You, you can listen to the album. Yep. Yep. And enjoy hey. yourselves. Have a good time. Have fun. Oh, it's excellent. And um, I really, I really thank you for, taking your time out today keith and joining me for this it's it's a, been a pleasure and to speak to someone from a band my third tattoo was a black flag tattoo <laughs> so ah uh, yeah it's hard to see but hey cheers my friend i'm gonna eat some halibut uh, i'll have some breakfast because it's uh it's nearly 12 o'clock here in, in the AM. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, in the PM. All right. Sweet. See you Catch later. Catch up, my friend. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Cheers. Have a, have a good day.